In this lesson, we're going to demonstrate enabling multi-factor authentication for your Office 365 users. In February of 2014, the Office 365 team at Microsoft announced multi-factor authentication for Office 365. And in a world where we see credentials being stolen from various vendors, credit card information and so forth, or identity information from cloud-based solutions, you can certainly appreciate that there's a need to consider another way of providing security and multi-factor authentication is one of those solutions to provide a greater level of security. The nice thing about Office 365 is that it's relatively easy to implement and it allows for a good deal of flexibility for the end users as well. Let's demonstrate the implementation and then we'll show the end users side in terms of being able to choose the type of secondary authentication that they personally prefer. So here we are logged into our Office 365 Admin Center. We go to Users and Groups and you'll notice here at the bottom it says Set Multi-Factor Authentication Requirements. One thing to note if you are working with Office 365 and you do not see an option to enable multi-factor authentication it's possible you're using one of the small business or dedicated plans and in those cases it's not supported. So you have to have either a mid-sized business, an enterprise, or an academic plan in order to enable multi-factor authentication. We click Setup and you can see that by default the status is disabled for our end users. We're going to select one of those end users, Adam Smith, and we're going to click Enable. It says please read the deployment guide if you haven't already. It also says if your users do not regularly sign in through the browser, which many users do not, they use their Outlook client or their mobile device clients, it says you can send them to this link to register for multi-factor authentication. Well, we're going to have Adam Smith log in through the browser and then he'll be able to choose his secondary authentication settings once he's logging in. We click Enable Multi-Factor Authentication and it says Updates Successful. Okay, so Adam Smith is enabled. Now let's use another browser, a Chrome browser, to log in using Adam Smith's account. So here we see Adam Smith is logging into the Office 365 Outlook web app portal. And we see that instead of logging him straight in, it says your admin has required that you set up this account for additional security verification. We click set it up now. and notice the different types of authentication we can configure. So we can choose mobile phone, office phone, mobile app. We can choose if mobile phone to send me a code by text message or to directly call me. We can select our region, provide our number, we'll put in a real number so that we'll actually get the call and we'll click next. Now keep in mind we could go with one of the other options here. We can have it call our mobile phone, call the office phone, send a text code to the mobile phone, we can notify ourselves through an app that we can download, we can have a one-time code that's shown in an app that we download. So we have a variety of different secondary authentication methods and so it really just gives the end user a ton of flexibility so that they can choose one that they prefer. In our case we're going to have it call us. So we've chosen the call me option, we have the number put in, we click next. We're going to verify now. And you can see we're receiving a call. Thank you for using Microsoft's sign-in verification system. Please press the pound 
okay to finish your verification. If you do not initiate this verification, someone may be trying to access your account. Please press zero pound to submit a fraud alert. This will notify your company's IT team and block further verification attempts. Your account has been verified. Goodbye. And as you can see, we have validated the secondary authentication method. And so now we can click next to continue. Now the next part of the process is a feature called app password. Applications like Microsoft Office will need new passwords for this account. So keep in mind the password you currently use for accessing Outlook web app is separate than the password that would be generated for your Microsoft applications. So at this point you can choose to generate the app password which really is something that's generated for you if you wish to use that as an application password for working with those various office applications as opposed to accessing your browser itself or you can say I don't use this account with these applications. Some may find the additional password for accessing applications to be a bit much. And it's also important to note that there are certain devices that don't support the application password feature, like the iPhone and iPad. These don't support it. And now let's just take a quick look at what happens when Adam tries to log in again in the future. So you see it calls his phone. He verifies that this is him, and it logs him in. One thing to keep in mind is that this isn't the end of development for Microsoft when it comes to multi-factor authentication. Microsoft has promised to continue to work on multi-authentication, enhancing security, including additional forms of authentication, like third-party support and smart cards, including the Department of Defense Common Access Card, and the U.S. Federal Personal Identity Verification Card. So we hope you found this informative. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in a future clip.